Hi guys, welcome to another video from Overbyte Gaming, and today we're going to be talking about Star Trek Klingon Academy. Yes, I'm still on my Star Trek kick, um, but I love Star Trek, or I used to love Star Trek before, you know, it was thoroughly ruined by certain new series, but we won't go there today. Uh, Star Trek Klingon Academy was obviously the sequel game to Starfleet Academy. Uh, using primarily the same engine with a few more bells and whistles attached to it. And generally speaking, they did a good job. Uh, of course, this time you're not Starfleet, you're Klingons. And it's set just before the uh, Undiscovered Country, Star Trek VI, and features the eminent talents of Christopher Plummer as Chang and David Warner as Gorkon, reprising their roles from um, An Undiscovered Country, which, in my opinion, is the second best Star Trek the movie. I, I, I don't think that's controversial to say. Duty, Very good movie. And probably... I know it's not, not as good as, as Wrath of Khan, but it... His I probably watched that one himself. more, to be fair. There's more, more of a hopeful of sort of... Obviously, Wrath of Khan is sort of and bailing into Return of Spock and Voyage Home and all that. A search for Spock, sorry, not Return to Spock. That was weird. Anyway, we're here to talk about the game, not the movies. Uh, so yes, very plays very different from Starfleet Academy. Your ships are no longer almost like fighters, really nimble. Uh, in this, even like a lowly bird of prey takes a while to come around. Uh, all of the ships, including yours, can take significantly more damage than they could in the previous game. In the previous game, if you went into um, a fight with, like with one of these Centauri, something, something like that. Uh, alien on. vessels, you were lucky to come away without having lost a fucking warp missile, which basically crippled your ship and made the mission unfinishable, because you couldn't warp anywhere. It's lovely. Uh, in this, you can still blow off uh, warp missiles, which is nice. You can also punch through holes. There's a lot of sort of particle effects, for the time anyway, uh, going on when you damage ships. The, the damage is there for you to see. Uh, which is really nice. Uh, the storyline behind it, there is a storyline. It's not you're not as involved as you were in Starfleet Academy. It's more of a set storyline. You don't really have any of those pathing branches. Uh, so you obviously are in a academy for Klingon officers, and you go through and you do simulated missions. Uh, we'll note that the first video in the game explains how Chang lost his eye. It was in a blood challenge with a rival house. So there you go, if you wanted to know. There it is. And then afterwards, it come, it, it's sort of based around the election of a new Engage chancellor, and obviously right away, Gorkon's the boy that wins in the end because he's in Undiscovered Country, but you don't know. There's actually three factions, so you've got the Gorgonite, Gorgonites, shall I say? Gorgonites, well, my small soldiers. Is that where that's from? I think it is. Oh, God. My brain just brings up the most ridiculous shit sometimes. Uh, you have the other house, which is the house that um, was rival of Chang. Um, the house? No, I'm not even going to try and bother remembering the house name. Um, Glog. It was, it's it's G-Log or Glog or something like that. Anyway, there's another house, bad house, bad Nick house. And that and the Gorkon faction are going against each other. But Chang doesn't really support Gorkon either. Chang's more like, well, Gorkon's a bit of a pacifist. And I know we're having a war with the Federation sooner or later. So I'm going to have my own faction. And you, being his law student, form part of that faction. And civil war breaks out in the Klingon Empire when you go and do basically exactly what you're doing in the simulator. But for realsies... But, you know, effectively, there's no difference to realities. It's just more missions. Uh, with a slightly, you know, a storyline that has more stake to it. And it's really well done. I could absolutely watch Christopher Plummer play General Chang, like, 24 hours a day on loop. Because that guy is just made for that role. It is so perfect. Um, Klingons are rather contradictory kind of characters, though. I, it almost feels like... You, they, they were done by like two All groups the and they couldn't quite mesh wish, them sir. together to make this one glorious Klingon outfit. So, I mean, because you have like warriors that are based around honor and, you know, facing your enemy and yet they have cloaking devices. Sure. That, that never really sat with me. That, that seems like a very Romulan thing to do or original series Klingon thing to do perhaps because they were slightly less honorable back then. Uh, but no, I, I, I don't understand it, but okay. 
you will be using your cloak quite a bit because a lot of the time they will f sort of put you up against greater sort of more powerful ships did i start this i did start this good god i'm just my brain is all over the place i'm sorry uh or just outnumber you with the amount of ships on there uh you will have escorts sometimes other times you'll be able to call in aid other times it's just you so fuck you and cloaking gives you a way of getting away repairing your ship which takes a while and so like be prepared to like sit in place and be like oh well my hull's at 12 percent this might take some time and then you inevitably get bored or turn to battle and get blown up but whatever <laughs> uh, so you will be making use of cloaks sometimes it doesn't seem to affect them though sometimes they still seem to be able to find out where you are and attack you i don't know whether that's something that was built in or a glitch um, I am playing it like community patched because it was released in 2000, so obviously it wasn't going to play very nicely with today's modern operating systems. Um, <coughs> this is the game I was referring to when I said I was having difficulty in getting it running. Uh, it turns out I did have the correct patch installed, I just needed to copy the movies onto the hard, well I say hard disk, but you know, M.2 and have it run from there because otherwise when you try and change the CD as I said previously it will just crash the game and moving all the movies onto the hard disk which means you had to go through six fucking discs because it comes on six but whatever they're only CDs they're not DVDs thank Christ and then it just plays from the hard drive you don't need to worry about this disk swapping in fact the, the patch acts as a, as a no disk key anyway so you, you don't even need the discs anymore you can pop them on your shelf or sell them or something speaking of selling it is available still on ebay to buy it seems to be ranging between 30 and 40 pounds i did not pay that much for my copy but that was a couple of years ago uh, and i got the strategy guide thrown in three so thank you mr seller that sold me that <coughs> much appreciated uh the way the controls are slightly different in clone because on uh, you have at the bottom of the screen a list of numbers basically and they all go into different sort of sub menus for each different facet of your ship and then uh, like you go into weapons and there's a button on there for raising the cloak you, there's targeting a helm all that good stuff you do sort of have to really sort of learn the codes or you could i suppose you could macro it on a programmable keyboard something like that so you could just press a button and it does what you want uh, I am. I was able to get a joystick running with it. Yay! Uh, only the stick though, but the throttle I couldn't get running. I don't know why. Uh, but I got the stick running, so I was able to play with that. I did try it with the mouse initially. It's, it's not good. I, I would highly recommend not trying the mouse. Uh, keys might be better. Uh, the targeting is slightly strange in the fact that you have like three sort of modes for it. So you have what's called manual targeting or bore sight targeting, which is obviously it fires where your the front of your ship is, and you move it with the joystick and all that. Uh, it seems to be quite inaccurate, but there you go. And then you have auto targeting where it will like track independently, even if you're not quite facing the ship, but if it's still in the firing arc, you will shoot at it. Um, also seems to be very inaccurate. And then you have the gunnery chair, which is the most accurate, but you don't fire your ship at the same time. You're literally just sat there shooting at things as they come into your arcs and shit. So, yeah, it, it's imperfect, I think. It's really frustrating when you, you're waiting for, you're like, we're up close to a ship, and you're like, oh, come on, torpedoes, recharge, and then it charging, you fire them, and they just fucking miss by a mile, even though you had him dead center of your screen. It's just, like, really frustrating sometimes. You do have quite a variety of weapons this time, so you have, like, your small disruptors go pew, 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 and then you have your big disruptors go roof, roof, or possibly a sound that doesn't sound like a dog, maybe. And then, of course, you have your torpedoes as well. And I'm not going to do the torpedo sound. We're all familiar with the torpedo sound. So there, there's quite a lot going on. Different ships have different sort of varieties and more of them and stuff like that. As the ships get more big, so, you know, you, as you, you start from a little frail bird of prey you will get into bigger ships destroyers and st this stuff like that as you go up through uh they turn worse they take a lot more damage and they dish out a lot more damage so it's, it's basically what you would expect as you scale up a ship really so kudos for that 
I, you, the footage you're seeing was initially captured at 720p. Uh, the reason I did this, uh, the, the mod does allow you to take it higher, uh, quite a bit higher actually, but the HUD doesn't scale with it. So if you want to see your HUD, you're kind of going to have to sort of temper yourself a little bit. That's also the reason there's no metrics up on screen, is because at 720p they're pretty big and obscure too much of the screen for my taste. So. Apologies for that, but it's the way it had to be, I'm afraid. But this was ne never one I had when I was younger. I bought this off of eBay, like I said, a couple of years ago. Uh, I think I got it running back in the day. Uh, but didn't really play it very much, didn't really get to know it. I think the, the whole complexity of the menu system put me off a little bit. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Maybe I'm coming down with something. That'd be lovely for Christmas. Um, so yeah, so that kind of put me off. I came back to it knowing what I was getting into and really want to give it a chance because I really enjoyed Starfleet Academy and Christopher Plummer. <laughs> Do I need to say more? It's Christopher Plummer. <laughs> so let's go. Okay, so once I got my head around it, it wasn't too bad. It was just sort of getting muscle memory of going on oh, and four, five, four or whatever, you know, that sort of thing. Because there are like multiple menus underneath the menus as well. You can get into like a visual representation of the station, like for damage control and things like that as well, uh, which worked fine. But again, you're away from the con. So not a great thing to do in the middle of battle. That's something you could probably do after the battle before you move on to the next system or indeed if you're cloaked and hiding like a big wussy man like I do. <laughs> Uh, one nice thing that it has added that wasn't in uh, the Starfleet Academy is the ability to warp within system. So if you're like 12,000 million Cali cams away from your target, you, you don't have to wait while you slowly get there. You can just warp straight to them. Remember to do it cloak though, pro tip. <laughs> Otherwise, yeah, you're, you're not greeted pleasantly, put it that way. Uh, the AI is a little sketch, to be fair with you. Uh, as I say, a lot of the time you're facing more powerful ships, so you have to be quite careful. Um, a lot of the time you have to make use of tractor beams to hold them in place and out of their firing arcs that are really going to mullow you. Uh, so you can get in like their dorsal ventral. Um, they do have a, a real high propensity of ramming you though, and that's cataclysmic to both ships, resulting in super heavy damage or in many cases outright destruction so you have to be careful of the little bastards because they will do things like trying to ram you stopping right in front of you Engage dead um, away, I think this is the reason they have actually added emergency stop and emergency reverse commands to the helm because it's easier than fixing the AI <laughs> but apparently it was a patch that made it better but still they they, they do not care they, they have no sense of self-preservation. They're just like, I must park my ship in your captain's chair. That is all. That is literally the extent of it. So you've got to be very careful when you're close to them because they will try and ram you or just have sort of allow you to ram them. And you don't want to be doing that, trust me. Ouch. Uh, outside of that, the combat is very satisfying. It can take a little while because, as I said, all the even the littlest ships are pretty tanky when they're fighting sort of like opponents that are quite similar to them. Uh, so, like in the footage, I think you're seeing at some point during this video, uh, you'll see the o me taking on an O Birth with a bird of prey. No, O Birth is a tiny little weak ship, like the Grissom from Star Trek uh, Four, Three, Three. And we know a bird of prey can absolutely one-shot it, no problems whatsoever. Not, not in this. It, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot more of a to-do. Uh, so you obviously have to knock down the shields. The shields in this time are a little bit more measured because you get percentile functions. You get a, a quite nice layout showing front, back, starboard, port, dorsal, and ventral shields. So you know exactly where your shields are weakest. I still struggle to get keep the keep the bad guys like on the sides of my shields though. It's only when my hull starts going down I'm like oh shit turn around a bit. <laughs> I am not the best at this game. It is pretty tricky. Certainly as you get later into the game and you're facing uh, things that have a lot more destruction coming out of their faces. So like getting close to them is tricky. You make you, make, you know ample use of cloak to try and like get in a good position before you drop it and lay into them and then 
hope you can do some damage before they get to you. You are able to target subsystems, which is nice. But it is very... Um, it's not just a case of like, okay, I've targeted impulse engines. Wherever, I, Whenever I shoot them, it'll hit the impulse engines. That's not the case. First, you get through the shields, and then you actually need to be able to shoot the impulse engines. There is like a physics thing going on, where if you can't see the impulse engines, you can't shoot the impulse engines, which is annoying. But also, you know, realistic, so I can only complain so much when it until it becomes reality that I rail against, which you know, people do nowadays, so why not? <laughs> so, Star Trek Klingon Academy. I think I like it better than Starfleet Academy, because I, I like the slower pace of the ship combat. It's not like this frenetic, flitting about, sort of, almost fighter, you know, using your constitution class ship as a fighter. Uh, that, that's not really, no, that seems a bit strange. So, basically, it, it's, it feels more like the the fights that you see in the movies rather than, like, possibly in games. So, take that for what you will. If you like, sort of, the more naval, strategic shit, then this one might be for you if you didn't get on with Starfleet Academy. There you go. So, that's my review of Klingon Academy. I like it. Um, I probably will play some more. It's not... I'm. I'm going to have to spend my next week trying to get the next game running because I have a, a few more oldies that I want to do and some of them are going to put up a hell of a fight. <laughs> so, we'll see how we do. Uh, I imagine I'll be able to get one out of the possible... I've got so many old games. 97 uh, running, so it shouldn't be a problem. But uh, we'll see what I come up with next week. Take it easy, and I'll catch you next time.